my name is Richard Dobbs. I'm pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. Welcome to Nate. We appreciate you allowing to come into your homes or wherever you may be to share with you the good news of Jesus Christ. We want to take a moment to thank everyone who continues to subscribe to our podcast as well as our YouTube channel. And, and especially for those who are praying for the ministry as well as sowing that seed, that financial seed into this good ground. We appreciate all of you and thank you so much for your continued support of the ministry. Today, we want to go come to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 and verse 22. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 21 and verse 22. It reads as follows. From this time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Notice Peter, he began to rebuke Jesus. For far be it from you, Lord, that this shall not happen to you. I want to talk to you for a few minutes on this particular topic. Man has a way, but God has a better way. Man has a way, but God has a better way. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for those who will continue to pray for the ministry as well as those that sow into this good ground. Father, let them receive a 100-fold return for their giving. And Father, we pray as we go into the word of God these next few minutes, I pray that you'll open our hearts to receive what the Holy Spirit is uh, wants to impart into our lives and we continue to bind the enemy right now and cast them out of our lives and thank you for your anointing your awesome power in this place in Jesus name we pray amen and thank you Lord I believe that daily living brings about daily dilemmas Hallelujah. I tell you, we deal with all types of problems, all types of circumstance and situations in our life. The dilemma can be defined as a situation in which there is a difficult choice that has to be made between two or more alternatives. Man will try and solve dilemmas that they face with some or limited success. And sometimes a quote unquote successful outcome can deceive man that they think they no longer need God. And I've been around long enough to fall into that particular trap. I have gotten some type of success or what I thought was success and got the big head and thought that I was doing more than I was really doing. And in the long run, it didn't work out the way I thought it should. When we deal with problems, and problems can be defined as a matter or a situation, situation regarded as harmful and unwelcome that needs to be dealt with in order to overcome. When we deal with problems that impact, they can impact us mentally, financially, emotionally, and even the stress of these problems can, can uh, affect us physically. Sometimes it can cause physical problems when we deal with problems. Whatever the nature of the problem, we need to strive for a lifestyle of seeking an all-knowing and all-powerful God to give us divine answers. A answer that is a response, his spoken or written word to solve our difficult or even not so difficult problems. The Bible says in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. What's the difference between a man answer and a divine answer? See, a divine answer are solutions that work despite our weaknesses or our frailties. See, God's answers work despite the human interaction. Divine answers. God has a way. See, when he said, my word should not return back to me void, but it should accomplish everything that he set it out to do. That is a divine answer. It's going to work despite human frailties or human weaknesses. And that's something to shout about right now. 
Because when we are not doing what we're supposed to do, God's grace kicks in. Oh, glory be to God. And he helps us. And I don't know about you, but God has helped me despite me. Woo, glory be to God. Proverbs 14 and 12 reads as follows. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. See, Proverbs 14 and 12 was written for people like me that, that need to know there is a way, there is a path, there's a journey and a habit that seems right to a man. Notice, it's going to seem right. It's going to seem like you're doing the right thing, but its end is the way of death or separation from the ways of God. It's imperative that we know the true way, which brings us to life and not death. Notice what uh, Jesus said in John 14 and verse six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father itself no, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus says this, I am the way. To what? The truth. What is true in any matter, under any circumstance or situation. And the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now notice what we're going to. We're going to the Father. The Father is our God, our creator, our ruler. And one thing about the Father, he has unlimited resources. God, he is the Father. He is the creator. He can create answers. He can make solutions. God is a God of more than enough. See, God doesn't run out of resource. He doesn't run out of answers. You can't put something on the table that God cannot solve. In fact, before you put it on the table, you already had the answer. That's the God we serve. When you have a financial dilemma, God has the answer. When you're being challenged in your body, God has the answer. When you're being challenged in your mind with the way you think, then God has the answers because he's the father. And the father, it, it, listen, the father has unlimited resources. What's the difference? Man is limited in his resources. He doesn't know the final outcome. He doesn't know what he can't see. There are variables that are added to situations that man cannot deal with. He cannot, listen, he don't know. He See, you, one thing about a man, a man can have plan A, B, C, D, and so forth, have it lined up, have it all worked out, and then uh, something will come in and mess up plan C. Woo -wee. I've been down that road before, thought I was going to have this and, and budget this way. All right, this month, month, this month we're going to do this and do this and do that and do that. And all of a sudden, something happened. Something goes on, like maybe a car situation or something you need at school or something you need uh, at work or something you need in your business or something that you need. But understand this, God knew the whole time. He is the father. He has unlimited resources. He is an all-knowing God. He knows what we don't know. Glory be to God. And that's why it's important that we continue to follow our omniscient God. Understand there's a dip difference between God's way and man's way. Man's way has limited success. Now, it can look good, and, and man can do some good things. I, I don't deny that. But God has, listen, let me say this See, I, I like to put it like this. God's way will always be better than man's way. God's way will always be better than man's way. Now, you may have to remind me of that, but God's way will always be better than man's way. Now, let's go back to Matthew 16 and 21. Remember everything we just talked about so far. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. So Jesus is telling his disciples what he's getting ready to go through, uh, what he's getting ready to deal with. And so he's telling them this. And then over in verse uh, 22, then Peter took him aside. After Jesus has just told the disciples, I'm getting ready to go, uh, basically through, through the resurrection process, then Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him. Notice this, Peter got some nerve. He started to rebuke Jesus. Now, I know you said, Pastor Dodds, he, he may be doing it out of a place of love and, and so forth, but one thing I do commend Peter 
Uh, even though he was he was he got corrected from the situation, Peter did not leave the Lord. Peter, you read Peter gave the uh, first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Peter stayed with him after he's getting ready to be corrected here in just a few minutes. One thing I do love about God, God loves us enough to correct us and we need to be corrected. Now listen, man's way, listen, you learn one way or another. I pray that I'm, I'm still learning. Now listen, man's way can take you one way, but God's way will give you solutions that last and that will work despite human frailty. And he says this in verse 20. Matthew 16 and 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be from you, Lord, that this should not happen to you. Wow. Wow. He told, he told Jesus, hey, this ain't going to happen to you. Well, well, let's see what happened. Matthew 16, 23. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. I want you to notice, but he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Satan is defined as adversary, accuser of a brother, those who oppose. And notice what he calls him. You are an offense, a stumbling block, a snare, a trap to me. For this, and this is important, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Notice what Jesus told Peter. That's very important to Peter as well as us today. We must be mindful of the things of God more than the things of men. But in this particular case, Peter was more mindful of the things of men more than the things of God. And we must be careful that when we're dealing with all the things that are going on around us, are we more mindful of the things of God? Are we more mindful of social media, news broadcasts, what our friends and loved ones are saying, what political people are saying? We must be more mindful of the things of God than the things of men. Because this, see, when you're mindful of the things of God, it brings about godly solutions. Solutions that help you with problems, solutions that help you with dilemmas, solutions that help you with whatever you're dealing with in your life. We must be more mindful of the things of God than the things of man. Because man has a way, but God has a better way. Man has a way, but God has a better way. Let's go a little deeper into this. We conclude that Jesus was trying to explain a divine way, and Peter was trying to bring about man's way. In fact, Peter. Jesus was letting Peter know that you're being, you're being influenced by my adversary, the devil. He is trying to use you to trap me. At times we can hear the written and revealed word, yet we may not fully grasp that the enemy is always seeking ways to trap us and bring a stumbling block. He will use family, friends, colleagues, husbands, wives, children, parents, and such like to speak to us and cause us to stumble if we're not in the right mindset. Rather than hearing and applying the word, if people disagree with, they might try to change the message just enough to get us trapped. Boy, people would do that. They give you just enough to trap you, just enough to get you thinking their way is the right way and God's way is not the correct way. Man's way well, changing the mess may not be God's way to bring about the divine solution. And yeah, you can try it man's way and you may have some limited success, but God's way will always be the best way. It may not always look like it. It may lead you, to, well, let, let, me get, let, let me read something else to you real quick. Boy, I'm about to get ahead of myself. Then after Jesus had told this to Peter in verse 24, Matthew 16, 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Woo let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Man, that is so powerful that we must be in the position to deny ourselves, our way of doing it, our way of thinking, our way of talking, deny ourselves, Take up the cross and follow me. 
Let me give you something and take them to the cross before I close. One aspect about taking up the cross is, is that I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it God's way. Taking up my cross means I'm putting my flesh, my desires, I'm going into self-denial. I'm going to, listen, I'm denying how I want to react. I'm going to deny the way what I think about it. I'm going to deny what I'm feeling in this situation. I'm, it, it feels right. It sounds good. But I'm going to, I've got scripture. I've got a revealed word that says I must do it God's way. And that's the way I'm going to do it. Wow. Wow. And let me say this to you. When you do it God's way, that's always going to be the best way. And one thing about it, taking up your cross don't feel good. It requires sacrifice. It requires putting some things aside. It requires putting your desires over and doing it God's way. Even though you, listen, it's a cross. It's a cross. Not every situation will feel like a cross, but there will be some situations and some circumstances that's going to feel like a cross. But you got to take up your cross. Take it up. Watch this. And follow Jesus. When we're following Jesus, we're doing it the way that God wants it done. And when we do it the way God wants it done, we're saying, man got the way, but I'm going to do it God's way. Yeah, man want me to do this and man want me to do that. But God is saying, do it this way. When I do it this way, it's going to be the best way. And when I do it his way, I can receive what Romans 8 and 28 says. All things are working together for my good because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. <clears throat> Romans 8, 28. All, we, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who, the, who are the call according to his purpose. What does that mean? When I do it God's way, it's going to be beneficial to me. It's going to be useful. It's really going to be helpful to me. That's doing it God's way. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for the opportunity to share your word with your people. And Father, I know that many people out there that are listening and watching, watching this particular message and I know they want to do it their way. I'm guilty the same way because I've been saved for a number of years but still want to do it my way sometimes. But help us all to realize that doing it God's way is the best way. Sometimes we have to deny ourselves, go in self-denial, want to run, want to do all types of different things out of self-preservation, but we need to do it God's way. God's way is always the best way. And Father, we love you. We praise you and thank you for everyone who sold into this ministry, sharing this message and making an impact for their, their homes, their churches, their local community, and so forth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for listening and allowing us to come into your homes or to your cars or wherever you may be and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray that you will continue to move forward in the things of God and let God continue to have this way. And remember, it's going to work out for your good. If you'd like to, for us to pray with you, uh, I announced to you the information how you can share your prayer requests, as well as so into this good ground. You know, one of the messages we just, uh, just recently talked about is how God blessed the people so they could help the house of God. And I believe that God is blessing many of you to share and to sow into this good ground. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, without a vision, the people perish. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the anointed word that was received from our very own Pastor Richard E. Dobbs. We pray that you continue to feel encouraged as we continue to follow our omniscient guide in our faith in all that we do. On our website entitled OCCVR.org, you can find additional information about our church, including our podcast, 
entitled The Overcomers, under the Media tab, when you scroll down, you can find different messages to listen to that are just a click away as we continue to build our faith and encourage ourselves in our daily walk. You can also donate and give online with, by clicking the Donate button. And you can click on this yellow Donate button that will take you to the PayPal.com website to continue with giving online. You can also contact us and send in a message as well, especially if you have a prayer request that you would meet that you would like to feel encouraged. Thank you so much and be blessed.